and your reaction to what you were just hearing? It's really hard to watch, I think. Obviously, there's huge relief because it feels like the end is somewhat near, but then we're told it's temporary. But I think watching all the hostages come back and being reunited with their family, I was particularly watching Emily Hans, the nine-year-old girl whose dad... You know, I'm sure you saw it, Kay, where he was saying, I'm glad she's dead because it's, it means she's safe because who knows what's going to happen to her. Then she turns up in... Pink pajamas. Yeah, there she is. Um, we actually interviewed um, Dad <laughs> before she was really hoping against hope that she would be uh, released before Christmas. Um, she had her ninth birthday in captivity. I love this image here where she's with the dogs, the, both the doggies wanting to be um, get in on the cuddles. Um, there is a suggestion that uh, if Hamas agrees to the negotiations, um, the pause could be extended for 24 hours for every 10 hostages that are released. Look, I think if we can get more hostages out, because I mentioned Emily Hans, but then I learned that she was at a sleepover, apparently, and the friend that she was with has been released, but the friend's mother hasn't been released. That's what I read. I mean, I don't know how much of this is verified, but if we get into a situation where all the hostages are released and aid is given into Gaza, then it really feels, as I say, Kay, that this horrible nightmare is finally sort of coming to an end. And I don't know if it means that it will actually end the conflict, but what I really hope is, is there's no escalation of violence at the end, because it's just becoming untenable, I think. And I'm sure, like me, you've been watching it thinking, I can't imagine what people are going through. And then I read about these two teenage boys who came out, I think a girl and a boy, actually, siblings who came out and then found out their mother was dead. And just thinking about how do we get these ba people back to living, back to society, there's going to be a lot of therapy in all of this. So for me, if it continues, we get the hostages back, there's enough aid put in, and then ultimately we've got to see an end to this. It's gone on for too long. And your view on the marches, um, weekly marches in central London? I think... I was thinking about this. I think the main thing, Kay, is that I feel really sad that we even had to have that march. Like, people felt they had to march against anti-Semitism in London. I mean, I'm someone who is raised by a Jewish mother in... Uh, sorry, a Muslim mother in a Jewish community. And we spent Friday nights with our neighbours and we got on so well. How are people feeling like they can't walk around in England, in London, and that they're fearful because of their identity and culture. So, for me, the fact that the march even went ahead... There were two marches, of course, pro-Palestine march on Saturday as well. And, and I'm just going to come on to that, yeah. that there are lots of people, and you know what my constituency is like, I've got a big Jewish community, a big Muslim community, there are Muslim people saying to me, I don't feel I can get on the tube wearing a hijab because I feel like I might be attacked. Like, what have we come to where Jewish people are feeling unsafe, Muslim people don't feel they can wear a hijab because they're going to be attacked? We've never been like this. We've always been a melting pot of cultures where people can get on. And I think we've got to find a way through this where we restore that humanity and the harmony. There's no need for these marches anymore because people are living together. And I don't want to sound naive. I know there have always been problems, but it does feel the escalation that's happened and the crime that I look at at the moment is just... I, I mean, I sort of don't want to raise my children in a society where it's becoming like that. So there's a big job to be done in terms of politicians, I think media presenters, but also organisations like Tell Mama, CSU, who are doing a fabulous job in making sure this is monitored and it doesn't get out of control. I wondered if you had a view, um, Julie, about um, Tommy Robinson being there yesterday. He was arrested, I believe, I believe he was arrested by the police. I mean, you don't have to like him. You don't have to want to have anything to do with him. But is it appropriate that someone should be arrested just for being there? I mean, the presence of Tommy Robinson is never a good thing, is the first thing I would say. Was he doing anything when he was arrested? I didn't actually... He wasn't. Well, I guess there must have been a reason why he was arrested, and I don't know the ins and outs of that. But I have to say... Probably any... keep the peace, I would have thought, is what the police will say. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out in the fullness of time. But, you know, he, he is a British citizen. Should he not be allowed to do that if that's what he wants to do? Look, I think the march, um, from what all the reports I've heard, is a very happy one. It was very peaceful. It felt like there were no arrests made. It felt like it went very well. Obviously, the police thought something was going to happen if Tommy Robinson was there, and that's probably why they took the decision. I don't... I haven't seen the report. I just heard very briefly that he had been arrested. Mm. Um, but... You know, maybe he was planning to do something. We don't know, do we? No, I'm sure, you know, well, perhaps he'll come on the show and we could ask him about it. Um, talk to me about net migration. 
We're going to hear from the Home Secretary. He's going to give us the figures. I mean, or talk to us about what the, the government might do about the figures. Um, but a million net migration, two years? Something's got to be done. So net migration has got to come down. What I have seen is that year after year, the government set targets which they've consistently failed to deliver on. So targets clearly don't work. What we've got to do is look at the needs of the economy and also look at external factors. So whether there's COVID, obviously the pandemic meant that migration figures changed, whether it's the war in Ukraine, migration figures change. So I think there's a need to assess what's happening externally, the needs of the economy, and then decide what to do about migration. I think an arbitrary target just doesn't work, and the government's proved that. Um, yeah, we heard, I think it was uh, Boris Johnson writing in the Mail, his column in, his, in the Mail over the weekend, saying that the points-based system, which he introduced, was a bad idea. What does Labour think? <laughs> He's gone back on quite a lot of things he said, I think, and this is just another one of them. What we think in the Labour Party is that there's an independent tree, independent migration advisory committee. And the links from that committee to organisations that deal with skills and training is probably the most important link we can make at the moment because the underlying root causes of this is the skills shortage and the fact that there's, there's a lack of skills in certain parts in the country that we need to address. If we don't address those root concerns, I don't think these top-line changes to policy is going to achieve anything. OK, just before I let you go, the thing that you want to talk about us this, this morning is about small business, late payments. Yeah, so what we've heard from small businesses is the late payments is costing them severely. It's £25 billion wow. to the economy because invoices get lost, they're chased up and big businesses don't pay them. What we've decided in the Labour Party, because we want small and medium businesses to thrive, is that big businesses need to report on their payment procedures and their practices and also put it in their annual report. So we can actually see how big businesses behave and this has been welcomed by the Federation of Small Businesses to say this will help them largely. I think it was about 7,000 small businesses that just folded because they couldn't get their invoices paid and that's unacceptable. It's detrimental to the economy and we've got to fix it. Okay, we must leave it there. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it.